sometimes we just have to work with the challenges and hurdles we have with motivation instead of trying to work against them. It's complicated, but tend to, to help a lot. Thank you so much, Jason, for being here. Welcome back to another Jason Talk. Happy and lovely to have you back here. Today, we will be talking about motivation as Thank you, Jason, for joining us. If you don't know who Jason is, first of all, go look at the other video that I posted on YouTube. Jason is graduated in biopsychology and he is the CEO of RAD, a very cool, super cool NGO that you should all know about. This is an NGO that help you find therapy if you need to, and they also help you to fund the therapy. So again, thank you, Jason, for joining us and bringing your knowledge. First of all, if you had to give a definition to motivation, what would it be? Yeah, motivation is kind of all over the place. The idea that motivation is bullshit, I, I think usually that line of thinking comes from is motivation necessary to complete a task? Is Do you have to be or feel motivated to do things? I guess I could agree in, in that sense. They we're definitely able to do things without feeling motivated. There's definitely a lot of times where we're pushed to do things regardless of whether we're feeling motivated or not. But it, it definitely is possible to connect deeper with motivation and to optimize and hack things around in your life to stay motivated. In the same way somebody might really focus on getting into a flow state and staying within that flow state, we can do some of the same things with motivation. I find myself constantly shooted with this kind of videos that are all about motivation, saying that if you're not achieving your goals, it's because your motivation is not big enough. But some of us have very big motivation, like maybe they want to become doctors and saving lives have to be a good motivation. It's a huge motivation. So is there something wrong with our motivation that we have or is it just maybe there is something more than that i think it has a lot to do with the way that we frame motivation and it has a lot to do with the way that we're kind of sold motivation you know we see these inspiring stories we hear about all of these incredible things that people are doing and immediately we feel like we're missing out we feel like we want to experience what that person is experiencing. The problem with this and, and usually why we don't end up gaining too much from watching these kinds of videos is that the, the type of motivation that you're feeling initially when you watch these videos is what we would refer to as performance based motivation. There's a lot of different areas of motivation and, and different fields agree or disagree on what these areas of motivation are, but the, the two main ones that tend to be agreed on, one is, is called mastery and the other is performance. Performance is what we usually are being sold and never really connect with. Mastery is somebody who is motivated to succeed in a task and that motivation comes internally. This is somebody who is really excited about learning something, wants to gain that knowledge, wants to be able to share that knowledge. And they, they're really, I guess what we would see is self-motivated. But performance and the science behind performance-based motivation is very different. Performance-based motivation is very short term. It is us contrasted against others. It's us competing against others. And although it can be a very powerful motivator in its short-lived duration, we've consistently seen in research that, yeah, it's, it's not the best kind of motivator for a lot of what we want to feel. But, you know, when we see all of these things on YouTube, all of these videos about how to be motivated, stories of passion, unfortunately, a lot of the times what that elicits within us is performance-based motivation. And for many people, it's usually the, the negative type of performance motivation where now I, I don't wanna miss out. I don't wanna feel like I wasted my life compared to somebody like Gary Vee or Tony Robbins or some of these other you know motivation salesmen. They're trying to reach an insecurity of yours and 
elevate you in that moment. But very, very few people seem to connect with that, a grander sense and a mastery sense. How do we understand if we're having the right kind of motivation? Probably one of the biggest flaws of our education system is that so much of what we're being tested on and, and even just having those tests focuses on us simply being performance-based motivators. This is why a lot of people don't remember anything that they did in school. They were usually negatively performance-based motivated, where it was, I just don't want to fail or get in trouble or get yelled at or upset my parents. So I'll just perform now, but there's no real interest. Somebody might step away from school really passionate about something, but there usually wasn't a huge amount of performance-based motivation or stress acted on that person. If you think back to what your favorite thing in school was, what you felt most inspired by, uh, usually related to the teacher, or it usually related to something that didn't really stress you out or overwhelm you. It was something that you're really fond of, of something that you're really excited by. And that is where we get into that mastery based motivation. You just actually want to know this. You just actually want to consume this information. It's something that you feel is important as your identity. School, you would hope would refine some of that, this kind of quest for knowledge, but it just doesn't. It's the same thing, you know, even when we look at our, our daily work, if you are not at all motivated to do your work, I mean, that's, that sucks. But it is often the case that a lot of people don't really have a choice. I could try and find a way to hack being motivated about working at this grocery store. But at the end of the day, you know, the, the real motivation, the real reason I get up and go to work is because if I don't, then I can't afford to live. And that's not a very powerful motivator as much as we would think it is it's definitely where burnout starts to seep in in case we found ourselves in a situation where for example we have an exam but we don't feel mm. motivated at all what would you suggest us to do in order to either gain back that motivation or fake it one of the best ways to build back it with motivation is to break things down into easily achievable performance-based motivating tasks. You know, we talked about the the downsides of performance-based motivation, but there are a lot of benefits to it. Performance-based motivation can be really powerful. We need to start small, really, really small. What I typically work on with somebody who is experiencing burnout, is experiencing depression, is this side of motivation where it's first thing when you get up, make your bed, send me a picture of the bed being made. That's how we start the day. It's a very simple thing, but you make the bet. Usually we'll also put things in our immediate environment that are good, that are related to what we're trying to do to make tasks easier to succeed. So if the first thing that you do is make your bed, right next to your bed the night before, put a glass of water. If you're trying to drink more and stay more hydrated, you've just finished making your bed. Your brain is on this little short dopamine kick of, cool, I accomplished the one task. Oh wait, now there's this glass of water right here. It's super easy to get it to drink, you know, a glass of water and get more water in. Now I've accomplished another task in what the, I wanted to do. So we want to start to chain these small micro tasks together to get us in the right mindset. And we can look at the long-term motivation later, but we definitely want to start training ourselves to compete and to achieve these simple tasks. When I was in university, one of the ways that I made sure that I was always well studied is I would condense all of my notes for a test onto the front and back of one sheet of paper as much as I could. I'd condense it down there and anytime I was walking between classes, I would pull out that piece of paper and I would read from there as I was walking between classes. I made it super convenient to do, but I also made it part of the routine. Sometimes we just have to work with the challenges and hurdles we have with motivation and instead of trying to work against them. It's it's complicated, but you know, I think that those kinds of things tend to to help a lot, especially because our mind can become so avoidant. Why do we put in so much effort to avoid something really small when we could just tackle it and deal with it? right away. But unfortunately, that is a byproduct of how 
our brain approaches stress. We get stressed out about something. We now see it as problematic, as stressful, and we avoid it. Well, why don't I respond to these emails even though I've responded to them in my head? I know exactly what to say. Well, at one time, I was experiencing a ton of stress and I needed to return to an email that I didn't really have a response to. And now I've related emails as stressful. This isn't the same case anymore, but my brain is applying that, anticipating that and struggling with it. Which is also why we start to go back to basics again when we're talking about rebooting motivation, making the bed, drinking the glass of water, making things easier for us, focusing on the performance-based motivation to try and push us in a positive way, get us traction. We want to reduce stress around a task until our brain relearns that, oh, this isn't what we saved it as. I guess it was just that one email that was the problem. I guess it was just that one person that rejected me. That's not the norm. Unfortunately, because that takes doing and practice, the <laughs> we don't often end up doing it, instead struggle. To summarize, the takeaway that I'm taking from what you said is that if we are feeling low in motivation, there are three basic steps that we can follow. First of all, starting small, so having small little goals, like cutting our big goal in a smaller one that doesn't overwhelm us. Then we have to remove friction, so if our goal is to drink more water, having a glass of water already filled next to our bed, it will help us because we don't have to think about it. In the morning we wake up, we look at the nightstand, we see the glass of water, we just drink it. So we remove the friction. And then the other one is to add routine. As you were saying, you were not going to the fight or flight situation. They were just, okay, that's what we do every day. I think this too is, is where the, the whole concept of motivation is bullshit really comes from because when when we are stuck in this place where we cannot find motivation, in some ways we have to choose to disregard it and just move mechanically. When push comes to shove, humans are incredibly resilient and, and do succeed. It's also kind of a hack. Once you have found something that you are really motivated by intrinsically, you can start to conquer tons and tons of things if you chain them correctly. If you can become really motivated to do anything and find that intrinsic motivation, you'll end up mastering a ton of different things along the way simply because they're in path to your goal. Staying motivated and staying on course towards that, though, I think is unfortunately a luxury in today's society. Thank you so much, Jason, for joining us. I, as always, I really appreciate you for coming here and sharing your knowledge with us. Take care. Bye.